Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about movies. If you're interested in more written content, I also have a blog called Eating Film. I'll make sure to link it below if you guys are into something more in that format. But today, I wanted to talk about Ama. So the movie starts with these images and scenes from, it looks like a huge city in Asia. We, we see the, uh, the countryside, we get these cityscape views from like way off, and then there are these different scenes of people at what look like holy sites, burning incense, praying, and it's all sort of mashed together. And then you see a plane taking off and landing, and it was very confusing. So after those opening scenes, it's difficult to figure out where we are in the story, for example. Um, I didn't realize about halfway through the story that the opening scenes weren't a flashback to the beginning of like her family in America. It was literally at the point where her family immigrated to America, which was a bit confusing because you never see her parents, which I'm getting ahead of myself. So this story is about a woman living with her daughter sort of off the grid. They're beekeepers and they make honey and they sell it to the local shop and it has become very popular. Uh, people really love their honey. And so their production is getting ready to increase and that has become the catalyst for a shift in the relationship between mother and daughter. As we learn, um, they live without electricity. They are completely, not just socially off the grid where they just live sort of outside of town, but literally off the grid where everything they do is done without electricity or as much as possible. Sandra's character doesn't even allow cars to come onto the property. Soon after you see them sort of going about their routine, we learn a lot about them, about their lives pretty quickly as the movie starts. Her daughter was homeschooled. They don't have more than like a few relationships with other people, including a local store owner who stocks their honey and is a friend. Amanda has just basically been raising her daughter on this farm of theirs, and it's just been the two of them. The daughter coincidentally is heading into town. You see a man driving up, and as he passes by her, he asks her for direction, and he asks her in Korean, and she doesn't understand. And so he just keeps driving and she just keeps going on her way. She's riding her bike into town. It turns out that man was her uncle. The point of his visit was to deliver the mother's remains. So the uncle shows up, delivers her mother's remains and leaves it up to her. And she is so upset and so angry that he showed up at her house. The reason why he showed up at her house was to deliver her mother's remains. But now that this stranger to Chris has come into their lives, it's sort of disrupted their routine. It has brought up a lot of negative memories for her mother. That starts to sort of intensify their relationship and cause more of a disconnect between them because Chris realizes that she doesn't really know a lot of very important things about her mother and her life before she was born, which is engaging and that's interesting and is important. And I feel like a lot of that, it was just to get through those parts, just to get you to the scary parts. So there's this tension between mother and daughter that's intensifying and Chris wants to go to college very obviously and Amanda knows that she wants to go to college and is passive aggressively and then aggressively aggressively pressuring her not to go. She is starting to become more and more like her mother which she of course swore that she never would be and instead of that being like metaphorical <laughs> It becomes literal, which is very interesting, but is confusing. A lot of it is self-discovery, discovering this part of her heritage, and then her mother 
having to revisit these memories with her mother, most of which are very negative and traumatic. There are m minor revelations that are, um, I think, not surprising to the audience, are supposed to be surprising to the characters, and when those revelations are uncovered we're just sort of holding our breath to see how the characters interact in that moment so when chris is telling people about her mother's condition i am waiting for the shoe to drop and for her to get a some kind of clear-cut answer that that was a lie there were just too many things going on besides Amanda's transformation it sort of just seemed to come out of nowhere because her and her uncle talk for a bit and he talks about her spirit being you know not at rest because you know she died without her being there and she died alone and all this stuff but how does that translate to this happening her body her remains are here so it makes sense that her spirit would be there with her remains. In addition to that, there is the physical manifestation of her spirit that is able to affect that plane of reality. So they really invest in the mother-daughter relationship and how close they are, how close they seem. So it's very, it's kind of difficult to get a bead on what is real and what are the, like the facades that each like Amanda's wearing and Chris is wearing in order to keep this thing going. Um, as it is, like Chris pretending that she's not looking at schools and doesn't want to apply and leave home. And Amanda pretending like she doesn't know. When the blowout comes, the confrontation is very awkward and emotional. And there are several of them throughout the movie. As someone who loves movies and doesn't have a problem reading subtitles, I've watched a lot of Asian horror films. I thought this would be a very active combination of Korean and American style cinema together. And I don't know why, because there have been so many American adaptations of popular, well-performing Asian horror films that are not great. For example, A Tale of Two Sisters and The Uninvited, there is no comparison. There is a saying about, um, you know, I'll never become my mother, and them taking that and integrating it into the story was very interesting. But when she starts to speak differently, it just looks, it's not scary, it looks it sort of mimics someone having a mental breakdown. And I wonder if that was the point. The timeline was very confusing. Um, like, how did we get to the point where we are now? It, it sort of jumbled. So how Amanda and Chris ended up on the farm in the present, the abilities that her mother's spirit was manifesting and I'm just like, it's it's one thing if you want to make people see things that aren't there, which she does. It's a whole other thing to affect their plane of reality, to be able to pull people into a different reality. Where does it end? So it is a little spooky. I will say that. Would I recommend it? Not really. I'd give it a two out of five. If you're looking for something kind of in the same spooky level where it's just it's a little spooky, little ha 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 in a couple of places, um, I'd recommend one is called the American version and Pulse, the American version. Um, they're a little creepy, little spooky. Character development is not great. You don't really care, care. Predictable, but there are a few jumps and scary moments in there for you. So if you're looking for something like that, recommend those two. I had high hopes for this movie, but it did let me down. For example, um, 
the fact that her friend, Danny, has a niece, River, who is the exact same age as Chris, and they hadn't hung out before then is crazy. Especially since he's known Chris, I think most, like almost her whole life. He sees her relationship with her mother and how it's not all honey and roses and that he knows that she's interested in going to college and knows Amanda's not with that at all, not supportive of that decision at all. She wants Chris to stay at home with her and to develop the business. I did not believe that at all. I didn't, um, especially since he claims to care about them. Like, it would be one thing if their relationship was strictly professional. They bring him honey, he sells it, that's it. But no, he claims to be Amanda's friend and they hang out and drink beers at her house. She allows him onto the property, really, because she is very firm about boundaries between, like, their home and the outside world. And then the, the spookiness, the paranormalist, the supernaturalist, is working on a bunch of different levels. So you have, like, spirits, you've got demons, you've got... Um, you know, being able to affect their plane of reality, not just like moving things, making people see things, making people hear things, making people feel things, being able to pull a person into a different plane of reality. There's too much going on underneath this story of this like mother-daughter relationship. And I wish they would have picked a, a stronger thread to focus on like they're not, like I said, they're not a part of anything. So it is difficult to sort of connect with them when they live in a, a bubble. So I kind of wish we got even deeper into that or just pulled away from it and focused more on the, the spookiness and the horror of it. I have a lot of unanswered questions as far as character development, which is weak, and storyline development, which is also weak but they are entertaining and they do have a few twists and turns that keep you guessing so let me know what you guys think in the comments below i can't wait to talk about it thank you guys for spending your time here with me today i really appreciate it and i'll see you all next time